Hello everyone, this is Talk Time with Cynthia. I'm coming today. We're still reading in our book um, by uh, Sean D. Rochester. Um, the name of the book is The Black Tax, The Cost of Being Black in America. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to gain understanding as to where, how did we get where we are today, right? Because I'm a strong believer, in order to know where you're going, uh, you got to know how you got where you are. So that's that's what um, the purpose of this book is. Um, this book is full of a lot of hard conversations that we I think that we have to have in order to move forward. So that's the purpose of um, me... Um, bringing this book to this platform so um not to create strife or or discord among the races but just to understand how we got to where we are so we can do better and have more love and understanding and peace and compassion for one another right and to realize that these things haven't happened overnight it took uh, hundreds of years for uh, things to get the, the way they are. So anyway, and another thing I want to talk about today is a little bit off topic, um, which is don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to um, hit the notification bell. That way that you will get um, notified whenever I do upload videos. So you want to do that. And then also, um, don't forget to let your family and your friends know what your girl Sin is doing. Because we try to keep it popping over here on the positive side. Y'all know how we do it, right? Love, peace, understanding, compassion. That's what we do over here, you know. No, anything negative, that's not what we want. We just want to be really, really positive. So we can speak to the masses, you know, um... In, in, in a peaceful and um, understanding way. So, yeah, that's what we want to do. So, okay. So, now, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into our book. Um, trying to find out where I was. Was this it? I think we went past this. Okay, um, today we're going to be reading. We're still in part two. And um, we're going to be reading from a title from part two. Which is black tax from housing discrimination 1935 to 1965 and i do apologize if i've read, read this already i don't think i have but i'm gonna um read or reread hopefully i haven't um read it but here we go Okay, it says, um, Black Tax from Housing Discrimination, 1935 to uh, 1965. Okay, it says between 1934 and 1962, the federal government provided over $120 billion um, in federal homeowner subsidies to American households. This was an enormous investment equivalent to one trillion today, which uh, had a direct hand in creating the American middle class and fostering the growth of su suburban um, neighborhoods. Um, while less than 2% of this money went to African American families. 20 million white uh, European immigrants and their descendants benefited heavily from these programs. Um, this invested, 
investment allow white homeowners to build enormous wealth that could then be used to fund college educations and home improvements, start a business, or put um, toward an <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, guys, inheritance. Uh, qualified black borrowers were uh, prevented from accessing these resources and were effectively barred from living in white communities that benefited from this unprecedented level of government support and home price appreciation. <clears throat> the irony is that tax dollars from black households were used to subsidize this um, discrimination against them. Below is an example of the Ferex um, Ferex is um, of opposition that qualified black buyers faced and that word I'm trying to say um P H A L A N X Phalanx Okay. So then um these are the examples. A Federal government through redlining the Federal Housing Administration refused to provide financing in neighborhoods where um, blacks live to blacks who wanted to buy homes in white neighborhoods and to um, developers who did not maintain neighborhood stability via racial uh, segregation. B. Business sector. Uh, Andrew Weiss, um and his 2004 book, Places of Their Own, African American Suburbanization in the 20th century, note that white financial institutions almost uh, uniformly refuse to lend money to African Americans to buy property outside established um, Negro areas. Um, C. Business sector. According to Wee's, and I think I'm saying this name right, it's W-I-E-S-E, Wee's, um, white real estate agents refused to be a part of transactions that permitted blacks to move into white neighborhoods. Um, and then D, letter D, um, residential sector, okay, uh, white home um, builders refused to sell or rent homes to African Americans and other minorities between 1946 and 1960. Over 350,000 homes were constructed um, with FHA financing in Northern um, California of which fewer than a hundred went to African Americans. And then it says um E um letter E private individuals. Whites formed um neighborhood associations where homeowners signed um race restrictive 
covenants, um, which prohibited the sale of rental of property to other than Caucasians. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Allergies acting up again. I guess you hear my voice. And then, um, the result of these actions were that, <clears throat> excuse me, between 1930 and 1960, uh, less than 1% of all mortgages in the nation were issued to black Americans. Overall, by 1972, uh, nearly 11 million families had entered the ranks of homeownership with the assistance of the FHA and an additional 22 million families were able to make improvements to their homes. And less than 2% of this discriminatory and segregationist-based financial support went to African Americans. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, below is an excerpt. Excerpt um, from a 2015 Time Magazine article about how difficult it was for even a a national baseball hero like Jackie Robinson to purchase a home in the New York metropolitan area. This is, um, I'm thinking this might be a snippet from the article. It says the, um, I'm not sure, Um, it says the Robinsons attempted to buy land in New York Cannon, but were rebuffed. Rachel called about one house in Greenwich, and after giving her name, the owners refused to show it. The couple settled for a property just across the state line in New York. Um, Jackie recalled that in the autumn 1953, um, we finally found a piece of land in New York's uh, Westchester County that was just what we wanted. The Robins offered the asking price, waited for weeks and were told that the price would be raised by $5,000. Um, this was a standard practice in housing uh, discrimination, a surefire way for whites to exclude whites in exclusive um, towns to claim that they had nothing against African Americans. It was just that blacks could not meet the asking price. Um, this was purely the market at work. They would say not racism. So the Robinsons promptly kicked in the extra five thousand. There was another piece, uh, another period of confused silence. Jackie recalled, at last, we were told that the land had been sold to somebody else. Mm. <clears throat> it was um, this way everywhere we went. Suburban whites did not want an African American for a neighbor, or even if it was Jackie Robinson. Um, after the Bridgeport Harlan Harlan um, printed oh Harold sorry y'all Harold printed an article about the Robinsons experience 
the citizens of North um, Stamford, Connecticut, were moved to action. Ministers uh, circulated non-discrimination petitions. The Robinsons family finally bought a home on Cascade Road. <laughs> um, Jackie Robinson was a baseball uh, superstar, a veteran, a military Terry officer and an American hero and white homeowners refused to allow him and his family to uh, purchase several homes which they could afford. It took a concrete uh, oh, concerted effort for the Robinsons to be able to buy their home in North Stanford. So you can imagine how truly difficult it was for ordinary black americans of any ca any class stature or income level to do the same between 1940 and 1970 3.6 uh, million black americans uh, fled the economic hardship of the south to cities um in the north and face far greater difficulties than Rachel and Jackie Robinson because they were effectively uh, barred by discrimination from government policy, private business, and neighborhood residents from acquiring property in white neighborhoods and were forced excuse me y'all um and were forced into concentrated areas of uh, poverty and economic uh, deprivation because less than um one percent of all mortgages across the nation went to African Americans. Many black home owners, black home buyers, sorry, uh, often had no choice but to enter into um, predatory lending contracts um, called contract uh, sales. In a contract sale, um, appraisals were not needed to finance the um, transactions, so the property was often given extreme markups in price, um, sometimes up to twice the market value, um, because it was a private contract user use usury laws u s u r y usury laws and interest ceilings did not um apply to sellers charged uh, extremely high interest rates to make matters worse the terms on the contract sale allowed the seller to keep the deed Mm. allowed the seller to keep the deed, which prevented the buyer from earning um, any ownership interest in the home while he was making payments. If a buyer missed a single payment, he would forfeit the entire down payment, all money, all a down payment, all monthly payment made up to uh, that point. Then it says, and lose the property. This practice was so extensive that one leading advocate. 
oh, one lending advocate from the 1950s estimated that 85% of the properties purchased by African Americans in Chicago um, were sold via contract sales. Instead of participating in government programs, that created uh, trillions of dollars in wealth for the fellow white citizens. Blacks were confined to high poverty neighborhoods, um, excluded from buying um, property in high appreciating uh, white neighborhoods and charged extremely inflated prices and predatory interest rates while trying to pursue the American dream. The high uh, discriminatory environment in the workforce and the virtual exclusion of blacks from the uh, equivalent of trillions of Dollars of government subsidies had an extremely negative impact on the ability of black Americans to accumulate wealth. By 1950, white Americans had um, accumulated 150 times more capital than black Americans, which made it easier for them to buy homes, start businesses, and fund college educations for their children. White Americans born between 1943 and 1951 would also go to the accum go I mean go on to accumulate an average wealth of 1.2 million by 2013 which is 11 times more wealth than black Americans born in the same period. Um, these government um, benefits went to the parents of the white baby boomers um, generation who were then able to lead trillions of dollars of inheritance to the baby boomer generation. Who will now leave over 30 trillion of inheritance to their children? Um, over the next several decades, uh, 4.2 trillion of which would have been an inheritance from black baby boomer families in to their children if not for overwhelming and near on um, a near universal presence of anti-black discrimination and then it's in the, up in the box our box that we like to talk about right the black tax the black tax box that's what i'm gonna start calling it uh blacks um receive almost none of the one trillion uh government subsidies. Next, um four point two trillion of inheritance is missing from the children of black baby boomers. And the next tax is um Four point eight trillion of missing African American primary uh, home equity. So that's a lot of tax on the um, African American um, race in America, right, guys? So then it says, um, and then the next title is Black Tax from nineteen sixty five to the present, right? So. I think I'm going to read it. Oh, you know what? 
I'm going to read this as a another video. So, because I don't want to make this video too long. I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't want to make this video too long. So, because this is like a lot. Oh, yeah, this is a lot. This might be two other videos. So, yeah, this might be two other videos. Yeah, this, this is a lot. So, anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for coming and hanging out with me um, on my channel. I appreciate you so, 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 so much. And I love you guys. And I hope that you guys are staying safe. I'm wearing masks. Um, practicing social distancing. Because there's so many people are dying and losing their family. And in some cases are not able, in most cases, are not able to have funerals and stuff like that. For the fact of social distancing. So you guys do your part, please. And um, just only go out if you need something. Um, you know, going to restaurants and stuff. I don't know. I don't. I'm, I don't want to judge what people feel like they need to do or whatever. But just make conscious decisions and not um, cause our babies are starting to die now. You know what I mean? And that's your lineage gone. So, when you think about that, it makes you want to be safe because, I mean, you don't want to eradicate your own self by making um, unwise decisions, to make, the, eradicating your own lineage by not thinking um, about what you're doing. Yeah, we're concerned about our rights and, and um, them, them not being taken away, but at this point, what are your rights going to be? Um, how how are your rights gonna benefit you if you're dead? If your lineage is dead, it's not. Let's worry about that later, right? And um, do what we need to do now to make sure that we can survive this. To have that conversation about having our rights taken away, right? So anyway, I just want to say thank you guys so much, and um, we're gonna end this video. And I just want to send much love to you guys good energy to you guys love you love you love you okay okay and i will talk to you guys later peace